To the window, to the Till the sweat drops down my ball. My ball. Until all of these bitches crawl. Ah, oh, skeet, skeet, goddamn. Getting crunk in the club, she's working. I like to see them females twerking. Taking their clothes off, fucking naked. ATL ho, don't disrespect it. 369, damn, she fine. Hoping she can sock it to me one more time. Bring your ass right over here, ho, and let me see you get low. To the window, to the wall, till the sweat drops down my ball. Oh, by golly, skeet, skeet, motherfucker, goddamn. To the window, to the wall, till the sweat drops down my ball. My ball. Until all of these bitches crawl Ah, skeet, skeet, goddamn Getting crunk in the club, she's working I like to see them females twerking Taking their clothes off, fucking naked ATL ho, don't disrespect it 369, damn, she fine Hoping she can sock it to me one more time Bring your ass right over here, ho, and let me see you get low. To the window, to the wall, till the sweat drops down my ball. My ball. Oh, by golly, skeet, skeet, motherfucker, goddamn. <laughs> I, he did not get this approved. <laughs> <laughs> that was a surprise. Uh hopefully uh uh that came through um for all of you. Um <laughs> that Christmas song definitely is an original. Uh she likes Dixon Cider says, Hey man, I just put a pizza in the oven. Could you set a 16 minute timer for me? It'd really help assist it out. Here's to another rotation around the sun. <laughs> And then Donald Trump's 116 indictments also said just the surprise Pikachu. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, welcome to the uh, show tonight. Um, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I know I got thrown off. What's up, peanuts? How y'all doing? I'm the godless engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Tonight, we're going to be discussing scientific evidence for God. And like nine or ten years ago, this guy, it feels like he has presented the scientific proof of God. Put it in a five-minute video, because apparently one of the toughest questions that we have ever wrestled with is easily solved in five minutes for Gerald Schroeder. So we are going to be taking a look at his evidence. This is a sort of revisit uh, for us here on Godless Engineer. Don't expect everybody to watch my entire back catalog, but we have covered this particular video before, but we do have the added bonus of extra content that I did not cover in my original video. So it is just a little bit different, but Tonight, we're going to be trying to figure out whether or not there is scientific evidence for God and if Gerald here can actually provide it. So if you want to fuck around and find out whether or not you're going to become at least a theist in some kind of fashion, then please stay tuned. All right, heathens. Well, today or this month, um, uh, we haven't really picked the charity that we're going to do, but, uh, you know, we've already collected money from last month and, and given a whole bunch of foster kids presents. Uh, we, uh, not we, but uh, KC dropped them off uh, last month. Uh, and so we were able to help them out this year. Uh, that's with uh, Kids to Love here in North Alabama. We were able to help give kids uh, a pretty good 
uh, you know, Christmas, I guess. Uh, we, we got a whole bunch of, like, clothes and stuff because apparently they were really out on, like, boys and girls' pants of, like, various sizes and everything like that. And tablets. We gave tablets and then gift... Oh, ear earbuds, wireless earbuds. Did we do gift cards this year or no? No, because they said they needed pants. Right, they needed pants. That was an emergency thing that they put out on their... Uh, um, uh, Facebook page. Uh, I am drinking some liquor tonight. It's Chattanooga whiskey. Uh, it's 111 proof whiskey. And it looks like there's a lot in here, but it was mostly filled with uh, ice. And so a lot of this is just water. Yes, I'm drinking it slow. Very small sips. But anyways, um, so that's kind of what we're doing tonight. Uh, you know, it's the last of December, kind of relax. Um, so we're not going to exactly have a full show. We do have some atheist news to go over. Then we're going to be jumping right on into the video tonight, um, discussing the scientific arguments uh, for God. So, uh, you know, if you want to learn some shit that happened recently, and we have a, a, a few items that are um, quite interesting, that happened recently. Uh, we're going to be going over the atheist news stuff uh, real quick. I do want to point out, I'm putting in the chat right now, um, a link to our, our heathen shirt that I'm wearing right now. Uh, you can get a heathen shirt, a heathen pullover, uh, if you would like to. Um, I think it's a little too late to get it before Christmas, but still, if you want to get it, uh, please do. So that's there in the chat. Um, but uh, let, let's go on ahead and get into the atheist news, shall we? Oh, wait. So, this segment is still going to be technically Today I Learned. That's what's been loaded. I haven't made up a song for Atheist News yet, so here we go. Today I learned some crazy shit about religious people. Uh, I, I uh, did not. <laughs> I left that a little... Uh, a little disheveled there with me off screen for a second. All right, so welcome to the Atheist News Desk. This is actually just the dark part of an alley behind a bar, but uh, we're going to be talking about some Atheist News. And first up on Atheist News is this guy who has the love of Christ coursing through his Christ-filled veins here. So if you guys don't know, Baphomet was beheaded in Iowa. I know you're like, Iowa? Why the fuck was Baphomet in Iowa? Anyways, on December 14th, a confused former Republican candidate for Congress in Iowa, Michael Cassidy, uh, stand a little bit too hard for Jesus when he beheaded a legally displayed Baphomet statue in Iowa State House. The display was put up on December 8th, and it took less than a week for someone with the emotional stability of a nervous chihuahua to totally lose their shit he turned himself short he turned himself in shortly after the incident and the party of law and order raised $43,000 for his legal defense fund obviously the religious freedom that they care about is their own they don't give a fuck about other people's religious freedoms and they celebrate it when people stomp on the religious freedoms of others they don't want other people to be treated equally they want to be treated specially and this is just another example of that all right, so next up on, on the Atheist News Circuit is this guy right here. Apparently, I didn't have my camera on the vertical uh, thing that I'm recording to. <clears throat> so this guy right here is defending some kind of sexual deviant that is in his church. A Texas preacher said that he would lose his shit completely and take people out with the love of Christ loaded into a sniper rifle from a bell tower if they talked about how his best friend forever sexually assaulted little girls in 2011. The preacher urged his followers to stay away from social media, and in a weird flex, he started bragging about how he beats his child with a wooden spoon. I don't know if y'all know about to train up a child, but that's probably where he got that shit from. This shows once again that the pro-life, family-oriented Christian communities would rather protect pedophiles and slut-shame preteen raped girls and beat children with wooden objects 
instead of protecting children. So good on you there, uh, Texas preacher dude. I mean, he, he apparently he's going to shoot people. So maybe we should put on a, put him on a list or something. Like maybe this fuck doesn't need to have a goddamn uh, weapon of some kind that could you know take out massive amounts of people. I'm just saying maybe a red flag could be put on his record somewhere. Finally, we've got Mike the Moses Johnson here. Uh, speaker Mike Johnson pictured here watching a preteen girl die while giving birth to her cousin claims God spoke to him and rebranded him as Moses. Apparently the Christian conservative movement is at a red sea moment that he must lead them through. Uh, apparently, uh, the only red sea that he's really reading, uh, leading, uh, conservatives through is a red sea of blood from all of the lives that his party is going to tragically end because of their archaic ideas. I guess the only kind of porn that Covenant Eyes doesn't alert us about is persecution porn, because that's exactly what this fucking is. And how scary is it that one of the most powerful people in the government listens and follows the voices in his head at night that he attributes to God? Oh yeah, and he shares his porn history with his son. Actually, like, he's not even doing it. He set up a program so that it automatically does it for him. He's like, you know what? I can't be bothered to alert my son about all the porn that I'm watching. So I'll just have a program, like, collect all of the weird shit that I look at, and it'll send it to him. That way he knows what to watch. So anyway, that was the news. I mean, I tried to go through this really quick compared to last time, so I hope that you enjoyed this little bit of news. Let us know what you thought about any of these news stories. Do you think Baphomet needed to be beheaded? What about the preacher defending the sexual assault guy that apparently he's going to kill people over? And then finally, what do you think about the new Moses? I think the original Moses was better. Um, I, I feel like this guy's kind of shit. But in any case, we're going to go right on into the video now. So if you, uh, you know, if you want to, uh, please do join us, I guess. I don't know where I was going with that. I was just kind of going off the cuff there. But now I'm just going to head on back over here and let's get to the video. What? <laughs> that needs work. I mean, I agree. It needs work. <laughs> We're workshopping it. We're getting it together. I'm more gotten together than last time. All right, let me get this pulled up real quick. My name is Gerald Schroeder. Yes, Gerald, we know you're Gerald Schroeder. Okay, so we got Gerald Schroeder here. Gerald is a scientist. He feels like he's got scientific proof of God. Now... Uh, part of my channel here is definitely to analyze these supposed scientific proofs for God. I've yet to find a coherent one, so um, here, here we go. What, I'm rooting for Gerald. I really am. I root for all of these people as far as to prove God, because if God does exist, I want to fucking know about it. That way I can properly flip him the fuck off in whatever kind of way offends him the most. Daniel M says, David says, good night. I'm feeling a little under the weather, so we're both going to sleep. See you later there, Daniel. And David, I hope you have a great weekend there, bud. Uh, you have a lot of fun. You play a lot and everything, and we'll see you next week, okay? I hope you're being good for Santa Claus. Oh, yes, and I hope Daniel feels better. I'm so sorry. Thank you for reminding me, honey. I hope Daniel feels better. I, I, I mean, I obviously care about Daniel, too. <laughs> All right. Let's see what Gerald has for us. Don't forget, uh, I, I appreciate all the, the member chats and everything like that coming in. If you would like to add your two cents to this evidence that we're about to watch, please consider sending in a super chat. That would really help. And um, also, be sure to like and subscribe. That would really help us out here on the channel. Oh, yeah, if you want free member chats, y'all y'all should definitely join. I wonder... You know, I, I, you used to be able to see engage with your art and start a poll. No, uh, I used to be able to gift, uh, memberships, but I apparently cannot do that now. That kind of sucks. Anyways, 
<laughs> All right. Uh, Zumi, you got three and a half minutes left on your pizza, so just keep that in, 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 in your mind. My name is Gerald Schroeder. I have, I have a, thank God, a strong science background from MIT, Master's Institute of Technology, Bachelor's, Master's, PhD, seven years in the physics staff, seen a whole range of atomic bombs detonated, moved to Israel, met my wife, Barbara Sofer, a great writer, and uh, then uh, teach Torah and science. So luckily, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I have the two that come together. And one of the questions is a, that I'm asked as a scientist is how can a scientist really believe that there's something that we refer to usually as God? You know, as well, I, I first I wanted to stop it right here because I, I, I mean, I'm not the kind of person that thinks that if you're a scientist, you can't also be religious. And I know that se in several different ways, people have found uh, 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 different methods to keep their religion and also do science at the same time. So uh, I, I definitely want to put it out there for people to not be the type of person to say that, oh, you're a scientist, you can't be religious, or to chastise a scientist for being religious um, and having that kind of magical thinking, but also being a scientist. Like, you, there's, there's psychological ways in which those two things can exist in a person. Now, I, I, I realize that there's a lot of problems when it comes to really explaining things of the religion, but... A scientist doesn't have to engage with those things in order to still do good science. You should definitely uh, weigh the, the, uh, their conclusions as far as a scientist goes based on the evidence that they provide. If the evidence doesn't make sense, and, and I'm definitely not uh, one of those people that thinks, oh, you got to put scientists on a pedestal and you just got to believe whatever they say because they're experts in their field. If something doesn't make sense to you that a scientist says, then you need to consistently ask questions to clarify it so that you understand. And if you still, if you understand and it still doesn't make sense, then it's okay not to be convinced by a scientist. Uh, and I, I just, I wanted people to, to know that right from the outset because a lot of people, they will pluck a religious scientist out of, of, you know, in their field and be like, oh, this guy right here, he's a Christian and he believes in God and, you know, he's a scientist. So therefore, you know, it, he's got scientific reasons to believe in God. And so, so God is proven. If he wasn't proven, the scientist wouldn't believe in him uh, is kind of essentially what I hear out of some people. And it's just not true. You can you are smart enough to evaluate these uh, arguments on your own and 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 know whether or not they are convincing, and don't just like don't just accept some position because somebody in authority says it. I actually strive to understand things, but anyways, we're going to continue on with his story here. Pizza timer, ah, ah, ah. get the pizza. Should I, maybe I should I should. Get the pizza right now. You can turn anything into a song. This metaphysical whatever acting in the world or producing the world. And the irony is the question's really a non starter. Science has in fact discovered God. And you can talk to the hardline atheists and they will say, it looks like science has indeed discovered God. <laughs> what? Hardline eighth like here's what I'm talking about. This is is a, a contradiction that's being said by this scientist back to back. Like in less than five seconds, he contradicts himself. Even hardline atheists agree that there's scientific evidence for God. How is that? Like they're not atheists at that point. If they agree that God has been proven to exist and they accept that position, then they are not atheists. They are Christians. Maybe we could be charitable. Maybe he means even the most hardline atheists have seen this evidence and have become Christian, therefore, va therefore validating that this is scientific evidence that God exists. Maybe that's what he means, and he's just sort of jumping ahead of himself. I do that all the time. You can ask KC. I'll just start talking like in the middle of a sentence. I'll jump over the entire middle of a sentence. Uh, anyways. Uh, so, um, she likes Dixon cider says she, uh, pizza is perfect. Thanks for the timer. Much love. Thank you, honey, for doing that. You always got their backs. <laughs> They're your people. All right. 
uh, Drew. Oh, Drew's book review. Sorry. I totally missed the member chat there. I don't know why. My mind jumped over it. We had our pizza dinner already. You have been blessed by Christ. Now go forth and suck my dong. Uh, we had a pizza dinner early, uh, already, and yes, I had pineapple on my pizza, and I don't care what you anti-pineapple peeps thinks about that. Huh? Oh, apparently you you have been denounced by KC. You, you do not have KC's protection in this. And how would that be? Well, if you take the trouble of going to the web and, and they're typing WMAP, the initials for, for a satellite, it's a diagram that shows the development of the universe from the creation over time. It's a timeline. Every word on that diagram. Well, just to be more specific here, um, the the WMAP like image, the WMAP image that we have, um, doesn't look like this. It's it's this small area right here at the very far left, like right next to that bright light right there. All right, and that that's what the w, WMAP is like that it, it's a heat map of the universe of the earliest uh, portion of the universe that we can actually see and so uh, that's what it is this is just an artist rendition of the timeline of the universe as it exists and so like there's a w map over there on the far right side and it's taking an image and it's able to see all the way back in time to uh, you know, some sometime, uh, let's see, 375,000 years after the inflation of the universe. So that's what it shows. Um, it, a little bit confusing there with how they cut it, but I uh, just wanted to specify that. Diagram comes from the NASA site. It is the condensed knowledge of the scientific community of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the uh, okay, so another small thing here which he goes really fast. It's only like five and a half minutes long. So he's going to go really fast. But, um, the, um, this, this, let's see. He said this being the condensed thing. I'm, I totally just fucking forgot what he said of how the universe created and how it got to where we are today. Each of the. Okay. So what I was going to say is that he's already starting to beg the question by saying that the universe was created. The, the universe came into being, the universe inflated at one point, but that doesn't have to be like creation. And the way that he's using creation here makes it seem like something or someone created the universe. So he's already begging the question when he's explaining what the W map is, uh, or rather the, what the uh, heat map of the early universe uh, actually is. He's, he's begging the question about that, leading you to an answer that includes God. And so this is very fallacious reasoning. Um, just because the universe inflated does not mean that it, a creator was needed. Like we don't need a creator for the inflation to happen. This is just natural shit. There are explanations for how the universe inflated without the need for a creator, therefore making it a natural explanation and uh, and thus making a creator unnecessary. Lines, the vertical lines, is another billion years. Okay, you start from a burst of energy at the extreme left side of the diagram, and you end up at the far end with the oval. The oval sh is to indicate expansion in all directions. Of course, because it's a timeline, we can't show that on, on a single piece of paper. We see here, most amazingly, that on the extreme left edge, it shows a beginning to the universe. Now, go back less than 50 years. If I were teaching that at Tech, I might have, you know, a person could lose tenure saying that there was a creation of the universe. It sounds like it's Bible. Because well, yes, it does sound like it's from the Bible because you're saying the creation of the universe. And that's where you go wrong with it. Because it, the inflation of the universe, if you start talking about how the universe inflated, that would be one hypothesis. Like we're talking 50 years ago from, t uh, what was this, like 2012 or so. So um, that would be, uh, what, 1970-something? Let's see, 2012 minus 50. 1962. I was, I was off by 10 years. Um, 1962. 
So um, let me see. You know, I've actually got ChatGPT up right now, and I can actually ask him. Um, let's 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 see what ChatGPT comes up with. Uh, when was the Big Bang starting to be taught at university physics or astro, uh, astrophysics? Courses. Let's see. ChatGP is going to do it. Saying, let's see. The Big Bang theory gained significant traction and acceptance in the scientific community in the mid twentieth century. Uh, cosmic microwave background radiation by Arno Penzias in sixty five. Oh, you see, so like, <laughs> this is really interesting here because. It, the the uh, cosmic microwave background radiation was detected by Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson in 1965, right? So 50 years prior to when this was made, it was still being, like, discovered. Like, this was new evidence. Like, what, what he's talking about in this picture that, that he brought up was just being discovered, and the hypothesis about what it means for the beginning of the universe was just being formulated, so, yeah, if you were to start teaching that in university courses, that wouldn't have been, like, part of the approved curriculum because it wouldn't have been representative of our scientific knowledge at the time. I mean, it was breaking scientific knowledge, but it wasn't, like, so standardized that it could have been taught in uh, college courses. So, yes, uh, teaching it that long ago would have been a problem because it wasn't part of our scientific knowledge at the time. Um uh, let's see. Uh, the Big Bang Theory started being taught more prominently in university astrophysics courses during the late 1960s and 70s. So the Big Bang hypothesis, the Big Bang Theory, was starting to be taught after all of this. And so it's, it's more. it would have been more accurate for him to say 40 years ago rather than 50 years ago, I guess. Um, but even then, it wouldn't have been true if you go 40 years ago because that would have been uh, when the Big Bang was starting to be taught and all of these ideas were starting to be taught. It's really, the problem is the word created. The universe was created. That's not how a scientist would actually put it. At least a scientist without some kind of religious agenda that's looking to tie it to some kind of uh, supernatural deity, uh, what I like to call magical wizard. Uh, so it, as long as you're not doing that, then you wouldn't have been like fired or tossed out or anything like that. That would have just been fucking science at the time when it was starting to be taught. It was 50 years ago, the overwhelming... Uh, hold on. Command Cyborg says, when I researched this guy, I misremembered the name and only found stuff about the former German Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's funny um all right let me go back a little bit because he did say something a little fucky there if there was a creation of the universe it sounds like it's bible because less than 50 years ago the overwhelming scientific opinion was the universe is eternal well i mean so that's that's still a possibility and even now, with it being augmented with the understanding that the universe inflated, we still consider energy to be eternal, for the lack of a better word, uh, you know, as far as this guy would understand it. Energy being unable to be created and destroyed means that it's just always existed, right? It existed prior to the Big Bang. We don't know what state it was in in the Big Bang, but we do know that a lot of it was piled up in this um, fluctuation or in this quantum scalar field that fluctuated, and it released all this energy. And that's why we get the whole Big Bang kind of name uh, for this hypothesis, because it wouldn't have been a bang. It was an inflation event. But it, it, they call it a bang because it's a lot like, I don't know if this is why the original scientists called it that. I think that they called it that because it seemed like an explosion as far as like how shit was distributed and everything like that. But I, I think that it still makes sense like calling it a big bang when you compare the inflation of the universe and the release of energy and how the energy transformed to the chemical energy contained in like a bomb. Uh, a bomb contains a huge amount of 
potential energy in the form of chemical energy. And when you start that chemical reaction and the, the, the bomb uh, chemically reacts and releases all that energy, you get this big bang where everything explodes and destroys shit and everything like that. And so the, the big bang uh, being, you know, uh, primarily driven by energy, uh, a quantum scalar field fluctuated and released a, a large amount of energy. It changed state from potential energy to actualized energy, I guess, um, in, in the form of inflaton particles that filled the universe. And then once those inflaton particles cooled down enough, they lost enough energy to where they could transform into normal mass and matter, um, which are two different points in our, in, in the universe's history. Um, they cooled down first so that like uh, atoms could form. And then later on uh, uh, regular matter started to form after, uh, it, you know, the, the quarks and everything were able to like bond and shit. Like it was when the uh, universe initially inflated, uh, it was so hot and dense. Not, not even atoms could form and not even light could travel through it. So, um, a, a little bit of background there on, on the inflation of the universe. But my entire point here is that to say that it was created definitely pushes a religious agenda. If you were really trying to represent the scientific consensus here, even 50 years ago uh, or, or uh, you know, 40 years ago, so, so whatever time in the past, then you would not say created. You would say that the universe inflated not created. There was never a beginning. The Bible is wrong from the very first sentence. And then we discovered suddenly Arno Penzies and Robert Wilson, the Bell Labs in New Jersey, the Northeast of the US, discovered the echo of the Big Bang, the energy left over, which George Gamow 60 years ago predicted that if there had been a universe created hot and small, it would have exploded and the energy would get more and more dilute. And, the, and Penzias and Wilson, these Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discover this energy that had been predicted overnight. The Bible got it right. There was a beginning to the universe. Well, no. So it's not, well, I mean, true. Like, it, this is a pretty slam dunk argument against the classical notion of eternal universe being that the universe has just always existed and uh, there was no point in the past where our universe didn't exist. Like, under that idea, sure. This, th this has um, uh, uh, defeated that kind of simplistic idea. But as far as the scientific notion of what it means for matter or, or not matter, but energy to not be created or destroyed. Um, you know, that is still like what he would consider eternal. Uh, so, I mean, it hasn't exactly been defeated um, in, in a more scientific sense. Um, he, although has to drive the narrative that, God is the one that created things and that, and that the Bible had it right all the time. What the Bible doesn't get right is like fucking everything in this image. This entire image is antithetical to the goddamn Bible because you got the inflation event that they've represented with a giant bright light. Remember, there was no light. Light couldn't travel. So there, it wasn't like that there's this giant light blast or anything like that at the very beginning of the, of the universe or like God had said, let there be light or some kind of fucking shit like that. That's not what happened. What happened is that the universe inflated and then it was too hot and dense with no light around, by the way, too hot and dense for light to travel through the universe. And it was only until 375,000 years after the inflation of the universe, was light able to actually travel through the universe? That's what that means. So there's no way that that um, that there could have been like anything that the Bible describes. Like God said, let there be light. Bullshit. Okay? It's bullshit. Now, God didn't say let there be light. The, in it, the universe cooled down enough so that light could travel through it and then matter could form. That's what happened. There was no magical fuck outside of this cone right here that went up. Oh, light, guys, we need a light. Somebody cut on a lamp. Like, that's not what happened. 
And also the whole let there be light thing would have only applied to our solar system. Let there be light. And then boom, the sun just appeared out of nothing, out of nowhere. The only people that make some kind of ex nihilo argument for anything in this universe is fucking Christians. And I get, well, I guess Abrahamic face. Those that adhere to Abrahamic face, they are the ones that uh, uh, adhere to some kind of ex nihilo uh, uh, creation event. Uh, that's definitely not what what um, uh, a scientist would say. But you can see, obviously, he's constantly driving this begging the question narrative of who created the universe, as if there needed to be somebody at the beginning to create all this shit. Now, the black in the diagram is nothing. It's not a vacuum. Vacuums are within that diagram, within that cone of expansion. Back vacuums are empty space, and space is something. The black of the paper around the diagram is nothing. It doesn't fit in our human brain, because humans think in a box. I mean, yeah, a lot of people think in a box. Sometimes that box is inappropriate. <laughs> she didn't even hear me. Oh, shit. You know, uh, I think um, YouTube automatically. Okay. Yeah. What? Well, sorry. Huh? Yeah, I've got to turn. I'm so sorry. It automatically checked it while I was setting it up, and I didn't think to, like, uh, unset it. Like, I just went through the process real quickly. So that's my bad, guys. I did hit the pause on the ads up top. I don't know if I can change that now. Let's see, monetization. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. I can choose insert min. I don't know if y'all know this, but when you get to heaven, your moral actions are not judged. You're only judged for believing in me. Thank you. Uh, I've turned them off. Uh, so it was just a quick setting that I just had to hit. So uh, it was set at like 30 minutes or something like that. But anyways, um, Michael Beber says this is to remind y'all, uh, to remind KC y'all are going to visit me in 2025 and we'll do a, I, I, uh, who, who ask, uh, yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Michael Beverly for your a hundred pesos. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. We're not going to be in Guadalajara and it's going to be in 2024, but yeah. Um, thank you so much there, Michael. Appreciate you. Uh, I think that's the only one. Okay, so ads are fixed and everything like that. The, so for one thing, this guy is uh, speaking from a position that, you know, where he doesn't actually know this. Because the whole nothing that exists like around us or whatever um, is not... This is a poor way to represent it. Because we don't know what exists outside of our universe. Other universe could, you know, other universes could exist, which would mean that it's not that there's nothing that exists around us. It's that there are other universes that exist around us. But if there's no space time that exists around us, then nothing can really exist in those areas. That means that there's nothing outside of our universe. Like if other universes don't exist and if there's nothing else outside of our universe, like no other kinds of space time or any other kind of fields or whatnot, then it's literally just not there. So, I mean, for him to say, oh, we can't really, uh, you know, we think inside this box that we can't think outside of, which, uh, did you hear my naughty joke? You did? You just chose to ignore it? Oh, okay. It is, and it was my fault. <clears throat> All right. So... He's basically speaking outside of his area of expertise here, or at least maybe not out of his area of expertise, but he's definitely speaking way beyond what we actually know scientifically because we don't know what's outside of our universe. We have hypotheses, other universes like bubble universes, um, uh, you know, other things could exist outside of that. Like uh, we don't know. We just simply don't know. And to say that's nothing, I feel, is like going farther than what our actual knowledge entails. A box made of time, space, 
and matter slash energy. No human, as clever as they might be, as expansive as they might be, thinks out of that box. So when we say outside that diagram is nothing, we can use the words, but we can't conceive of nothing. It doesn't fit in the human brain. I mean, I feel like it does fit in the human brain. Like, uh, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what, if we were to look at absolute nothing, like what that would look like. I'm guessing we wouldn't be able to tell that it was nothing. But also, I feel like we can conceptualize if, if we manage to stick our heads up our asses far enough, what nothing outside of this universe existing would be. I mean, it would literally just be our universe existing. Like, I, I don't know what he means by our minds can't conceive of nothing. Like, I just, I don't understand what he means by that. Like, I could understand from a scientific point of view, like, we don't know what nothing looks like because it doesn't actually exist. Like, in our universe, we haven't been able to experience absolute nothing. So, in that sense, maybe that's what he's talking about, if we're really generous about it. But as far as going too far, we don't know that nothing exists outside of our universe. How are we going to have this idea, is there a God or not? Notice that the creation force isn't a three-letter word, G-O-D. If you look at the words carefully, it's a quantum fluctuations. That understanding was first brought down by Ed Tryon, brilliant human being, in the journal Nature, almost 40, 50 year, 40 years ago. The universe allows creation of something from nothing, provided you have the laws of nature, the quantum fluctuation. Tryon realized, and he published in the journal Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, that you can create something from absolute nothing, provided you've got the laws of nature, quantum physics and the laws of relativity, and others, the laws of nature. So look what science has discovered. We can create the universe from absolute nothing, provided we have the, the, the forces of nature. Now the laws of nature, the forces of nature aren't physical, they act on the physical. So if they create the universe, that means they predate the universe. So now we have a... No, this is not true. Like it can't pre... It literally can't predate the universe. I, I didn't have a problem with anything that he said. Quantum fluctuations would be part of our natural view of reality. Uh, like quantum theory is part of the natural world, as it were, or part of our natural reality. So I don't really have a problem with any of that necessarily. But to say that the laws of nature precede our universe, I feel like is um, misleading because the laws of nature, what are the laws that govern our, our universe, came into being with space time. Like it requires space time in order for that to be, uh, in order for the laws of nature to have an effect or to be there. And so what that means is that if another universe were to pop up, it could uh, conceivably have different laws of nature. It could have different ways of operating. It could have different, uh, you know, one or two things being different could cause a whole host of different problems that are corrected by the laws of nature operating in the ways that they do for that universe. And the, the fact is, is that we don't know about all this stuff. Like, we don't know how it would be affected. We don't know if we change one particular aspect of our universe, if our universe, or not our universe, if a universe could come into existence. Like, we have hypotheses about it. We have hypotheses about how one or two specific settings on our universe could be changed and a universe not pop into existence. But there's a whole host. Like, <coughs> there's an infinite number of settings that you could change or an infinite number of values for the settings for the universe that could change in an infinite number of ways and still produce a universe. So, I mean, for him to be like laws of nature exist prior to our universe, that's just not true. The laws of nature have to have space time in order to have any kind of effect. And that only happens after the inflation of the universe. Set of forces, we call them the laws of nature that are not physical that are able to act on the physical, they create the physical from absolute nothing. And they... 
No, 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 no. Uh, so that last part right there, create the physical from absolute nothing. That's not true. Because there is no absolute nothing. That is just not something that exists in reality. Um, we find that when we remove uh, all uh, all energy from a space, it still retains a little bit of energy. There's still a fluctuation of, of energy there. And uh, we've been able to show this. And so there's still energy somewhere out there that constantly exists. So to say that, the laws of nature created the universe out of nothing. That's just not true. The uh, quantum fluctuations, like the qu quantum theory, this, this quantum realm to reality that exists outside of space-time, um, at least as far as we understand it now, uh, that, that right there is is only a, like a s small subset of the laws of nature. And, and that's governed... Uh, you know, the, the, those things are governed by what we understand about quantum theory, which is not a lot. We don't understand a lot. So to say it was created from nothing, created the physical from nothing, that's not true. There wasn't nothing. There was still something there, and that something was energy. Energy was still there. The energy, the potential energy was released from this quantum scalar field and that eventually turned into the universe that we have. They predate the universe, which means they predate our understanding of time. Put that together, it sounds very familiar. If you haven't noticed it, that's the biblical definition of God. Uh, this is um, a false equivalence here, because he's, equiv he's equivocating the laws of nature with God. And he's essentially turning the laws of nature into God without showing that this biblical version of God, which is a very specific version, by the way, like saying the biblical God, that's very specific there. So the biblical version of God is not the laws of nature. God regularly breaks the laws of nature in his story, but we haven't actually experienced God breaking the laws of nature. So as far as we can tell, God is bound by the laws of nature, making him subservient to the laws of nature, if this bullshit were any kind of real. So equivocating God with natural laws is not going to help you out because you haven't built that bridge. You haven't built a bridge from God to physical uh, natural laws. All you've done is said, oh, this small subset of things that I characterize over here as the beginning of the universe and nature itself matches what I'm going to selectively choose from my particular uh, favorite version of the magical space wizard that exists outside of all time and reality. That's called a fallacy. And fallacious thinking shouldn't convince anybody. There's only one nuance that's left, left, left hanging. We can talk about it another time, perhaps. It's that which created the universe, those forces active in the universe. But up to that point, science says, we, you are correct. The, the definition of the biblical God is predates time, outside of time, God is not a physical being, is, is a force, and it creates the universe. You'll notice that the opening chapter of Genesis, the only name for God is Elohim, God as manifest in the universe. See, now he's just playing word games with the Bible and, um, you know, basically molding his God to fit what we scientifically know about the inflation of the universe. But... This is not convincing at all because, again, he's fallaciously comparing God to the laws of nature. And, um, you know, in, in doing this, he shows how malleable his faith actually is, how malleable his God is. Because it's very obvious that the authors of the Bible did not have quantum fluctuations at the beginning of the universe in mind. Right, and I know a religious person would say, "Oh, well, that means that they just got it right, right? Like it just means that that, that God really did transmit His knowledge to fucking dumbass humans back in three thousand BCE. Then they wrote the shit down. That's not what that entails. What that entails is that it's pretty simple to imagine the beginning of something, 
uh, humans have experienced the beginning of things uh, since humans were able to rationally think about shit. They can experience the beginning of a chair. They can experience the beginning of a human life. They can experience the beginning of a whole host of things. And so it seems pretty natural to be like, well, if these things have a beginning, then of course this universe in existence has a beginning too. So it's a very easy conclusion to come to for one. For two, having evidence for a beginning to the universe is quite different than just automatically assuming shit because you experienced other things beginning. These are two vastly different things. One has evidence to it, and the other one is just a lucky coincidence. Science has indeed discovered the biblical God. Well, we just need one part left, crucial, that which created the universe is also active in the universe itself. The very fact that you're watching this now pretty much establishes that point. Wait, how does, how does the fact that we're watching a video establish the fact that God exists? Because I feel like that's what the point, that's the point that he was making there, is that basically we're watching this video now, so therefore God definitely exists. Which I have to say is a very Cameron Bertuzzi way of ending a fucking video. Like, I don't know if Cameron took notes from this guy or whatever, but that's a syllogism that just rivals the best Cameron Bertuzzi tweets. But in any case, uh, I don't know what he's meaning right there at the very end of it. I would think that um, if God does have any kind of real effect on reality, then we should be able to detect that in some way, which is incidentally the next video from him that we are going to watch right now. Um so we would need some kind of evidence that God actually has some sort of effect on this reality. Currently, we don't have that. We don't have evidence of this. So what, what on earth could be evidence of God as far as affecting our reality in real time? This would be awesome to have, and we are about to head right on into that particular video. This is Believe in God Part 2, Israel's Miracle is what he's going to say. Uh, uh, enlighten us about and I haven't watched this the mafia they haven't watched this either but we're going to watch this right now miracles often what a surprise video because the other one the other one was only like um, five and a half minutes long this one's only a minute or uh, two minutes long miracles often seem natural Sometimes they seem like luck, coincidence. So it's hard to, to identify in, in modern terms an exact miracle. <laughs> Wait, did, did this guy just say that miracles are exactly like natural events, so it's really hard to determine what is a miracle? So basically, miracles are undetectable, but I believe in them anyways. I feel like that's what he's saying, and I feel like that's what he's leading into right now. If you can't distinguish a miracle from just natural shit happening, then you don't have evidence of a fucking miracle. You have evidence of natural shit fucking happening. And that's all that you got. Because then hi. Come up with some evidence of miracles, verified miracles. And apparently so far, that's a fucking tank. This is a miracle of American ingenuity. The tank sticking our dicks up in the air and shooting one off. First Gulf War, Iraq was shooting missiles at Israel. 39 missiles landed in the most densely populated part of Israel. Nature, one of the two leading peer-reviewed journals in the world, published an article shortly after the first Gulf War asking why were the casualties so low from these Scud missiles? Oh, what happened? I don't know. That's the, why could the casualties be so low? Um, maybe they evacuated everybody. I mean, I haven't researched this particular aspect of the first Gulf War. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if I agree with the first Gulf War. Um, most, most of the modern wars now, I feel like I, I would have contentions with. Um, 
you know, I, I guess since maybe Vietnam, uh, I, I probably would have had a problem with Vietnam personally. Um, but in, in, in any case, um, they could have evacuated people. They could have hid under buildings. They could have, uh, hid, uh, you know, in, uh, you know, in different areas. Uh, like I said, they could have left the area. Uh, they could have protected it somehow from these missiles or whatever. Like they could have misled the enemy to think that, oh, there's, you know, I don't know if y'all know this, but when you get to heaven, your moral actions are not judged. You're only judged for believing in me. Thank you. Limited Light, who's been sending me hilarious videos on my on my uh, email, which if you guys don't know, you can actually send me an email if you go to godlessengineering.com, and there's a contact link there. Or you could just send it to john at godlessengineering.com um, for those of you that want to know. Um but limited light says GE tomorrow's joke will be about 3d axes and the Mythmas tree. I can't wait for it. I'm, I'm, I love the, the, uh, other one. It was, uh, about, um, Holly no meals, like Holly, but poly no meals and Holly. Anyways, I got it. I loved it. I'm a math nerd. I love math. And they analyzed and they brought examples. A missile lands between two populated buildings. It lands in an open lot and opens lands in a, in a school. They bring point after point, and then they have to decide scientifically why that happened. And oh, I mean, like if a missile landed in between two places and then didn't explode and didn't kill anybody, then it was a bad missile. They had shoddy equipment. That's also another explanation for all this. Maybe the good equipment was shitty. Maybe their aim was shitty, and they just so happened to hit areas that were not the areas they were targeting. Like, that could be it. Or, you know, they could have reinforced the buildings to where it protected people. These are feats of engineering, city planning, and leadership. This is not God. You know what would have been God? Like, if this was God, let's just say that it was densely populated area. Shit was exploding everywhere, but it didn't kill a lot of people, right? For one thing, that means that God wanted some of those people to die. Like, God, being the all-powerful fuck that he is, he wasn't able to protect everybody, which makes him limited in power, which means that he's bullshit in this whole biblical God aspect, right? So that doesn't help you. Uh, the, another thing is, is that if God were to really be performing this miracle right here, then I would expect God to stop the missile in its track. Like, if he was looking to help Israel, and he was happy with Israel because Israel was doing nothing but sucking his dick and caressing his balls, doing everything correctly, then God should have stopped the missiles in the first fucking place. I would love to know what the reasons why for the, the, such low casualties, honey. The buildings, are made of concrete. the buildings are made of reinforced concrete, which is something that I said was a possibility. Is, uh, the Israelis had uh, advanced warning about incoming missiles. What are you doing? To... Ah! I blew my load. <laughs> uh, due to advanced, uh, like, uh, uh, U.S. intelligence uh, satellites and everything, which is also something that I said was a possibility. Scott inaccuracy, which is something that I also said. And some of them were duds. I hit every single alternative explanation that could explain this shit naturally. And that's what fucking happened. <laughs> I'm so ecstatic about my reasoning abilities right now. I'm definitely patting myself on the fucking back. Anyways... I would expect God to just not have this shit go off. Like every time the is uh, not the Israelis, sorry, the Iraqis shot a missile instead of shooting the missile, it just exploded right there every single time. And it's like, oh, they had the most, they had the best missiles out there. Like they were fucking sold to them by Donald Trump or something. These are the best missiles that I could ever give to you. Okay, Saddam. Like I feel like that would have been far more of a miracle. 
even though it would still be naturally explained, that's far more of a miracle than uh, uh, what actually ha fucking happened. Their conclusion was luck. <laughs> luck, and it flashed to God. Right. Okay, so the other alternative explanation is just luck. But they did a whole bunch of advanced math and everything like that on the entire situation. Came up with those reasons that I fucking nailed every single one on. Just wanted to drive that home. Um, and, 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 and luck just so happened to be the other explanation. He's told, like, this is a common trait of a lot of religious apologists because they'll hyper focus in on the, the weakest part of, of anything and they'll represent that as the entire argument, right? In this case, it's, oh, they suggested luck was the thing. Oh, well, that's God. Luck. Are you fucking serious? Are you fucking serious that you're just going to chalk your God up to luck? Like, how is that? any kind of argument against anything like how was how was luck really a component to god like oh how did you find your keys stacy oh i was just lucky which means god helped me find them like that is is the mark of a crazy individual mike johnson why do you think you're moses oh i just locked up and heard the voice of god like I just, I don't understand why people have to chalk luck up to God because luck in essence is really just probabilities. Like the probability that this missile wouldn't injure a lot of people is really low, but it didn't injure a lot of people. So therefore, you know, the fact that it happened is really high. And so whenever you hear somebody say luck, just say, oh, it was left up to chance. And apparently that's all that God is left up to chance. And it's that that's his big claim to fame. Oh, I could stop this priest from molesting this child, but I won't because they didn't roll a one on the D 20. You will never find any other statistical study in the journal nature or any other period of journal that attributes the results of this stati a statistical study to luck. The whole point of the statistics is you find out if it's logical or not. But there is no logical. We're not... So, <laughs> hold on, let's go back a little bit here. I don't want to get to the Iron Dome just yet. So, the... Um, <laughs> he highlighted a number of, of, of spots where it claimed luck. But um, that's one alternative solution. But there are all of these other solutions but it could also just be chance happenstance like oh the low probability won out this time that's what that means it doesn't mean god it means the low probability is the one that happens like that's it and now he's going to say some bullshit about the iron dome logical we're not at the stage unfortunately we're going to see god's hand come in with the stage where god works through nature Why wouldn't God's hand come in and stop shit? He had no problem in the past doing it. In the, in the Old Testament, God, he, he did shit all the time. He sent a Holy Spirit into Egypt and killed the firstborn of every child. Like, you think after that, God was like, well, shit, maybe I shouldn't do that again. I should really probably stop drinking this Chattanooga whiskey earlier in the night before I send the Holy Spirit to slaughter a whole bunch of innocent children. <sighs> Man, I won't be doing that again. Like, what compelled God to stop doing shit? I mean, was it the invention of cameras? Was it the invention of the scientific method? Did God notice that people were doing shit he didn't really want them to do? And he's like, well, shit, I guess I can't do shit no more. I gotta be all mysterious and shit. 
I got to do things naturally now because everybody can take pictures and they can't just make shit up on the spot. And also the iron dome that covers Israel from missiles and everything like that. That's a mark of human ingenuity. Like that's human engineering that has produced that. And chalking it up to the hand of God or like God influencing the engineers to produce the iron dome, which is one of the best missile defense systems in the world. Like that's just, that just doesn't make any kind of fucking sense. Right. If it were God, they wouldn't need the Iron Dome in the first place. If anything, the Iron Dome is the result of God refusing to do shit to protect the people that are his chosen people. It's not evidence of God. None of this is evidence of God. If anything, it's evidence of God's ineptitude. Mathwiz 742 says, if low casualty missile strikes are proof of God, what do all the high casualty missile strikes throughout history prove? That's a good fucking point. If 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 the low missile strike or the, the low death toll to the missile strikes is proof of God, then what does that mean about those that did die in the Gulf War in Israel? What does that mean for them? Jesus loves the little children. Maybe a little too much. God and iron. (laughs) KC said that even God can't defeat the Iron Dome because it's iron. (laughs) Technically, it's not, but it's called the Iron Dome, and I could see God getting a little scared, like, I don't know about this. (laughs) I mean, just think about it. If God did start like destroying missiles and all that kind of shit. And it was the biblical God and like the Iraqis realize this. All they'd have to do is build their missiles out of iron. Just buy a whole bunch of iron, build your missiles out of it. God can't stop it. God's defeated by iron. Just like in the supernatural show with the Winchester boys. You can't build them out of iron. Oh, they're too heavy. Well, I mean, you could coat them in iron. Would that still be too heavy, you think? <laughs> Big iron. No, no, no I, I, yeah, I get that. If it was made out of pure iron, yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> but, I mean, if you think about it, you could totally coat, like, wood and iron, right? And then God would still be defeated by it because it's not anything about the structural integrity of it. It's just the fact that it's an element and God's like, fuck, why did I make that? I can't deal with iron, yo. It fucks me up. <laughs> but uh, so uh, where was God? Uh, you know, what does it mean uh, the, for the high casualty parts of the uh, Gulf War? What does it mean for the high casualty parts of any war previous to that? Um, against God's chosen people or any Christians or any Jews or any, anybody like that, what does that mean for them? Like, I feel like people don't actively think about these things or even worse, they do think about these things and they explain them by saying, oh, well, God works in mysterious ways. Like, that's one possible explanation. Another possible explanation is, well, you know, maybe you just did something that God just wasn't happy about, and so he decided not to stop the missile from destroying your entire fucking family. Like, it pisses me off, if you can't tell. In fact, Maimonides, in the Guide for the Perplexed, published in the year 1190, writes explicitly that what are angels? God running the world through the forces of nature. What are angels? God is running the world for natural forces. So basically, you just pick some natural shit that has a low probability of happening, and then you say it's God. Even though we have natural explanations for that shit. No, fucking angels. It's angels descending from above like a fucking freedom bird. I'm here to save you. Freedom. America. America. Fuck yeah. I mean, yeah, he probably will. 
I'm surprised he didn't show up now. <laughs> uh, you know, he probably got into the whiskey. You can call it luck. You can call it wing shares that move the whistle this way. But the journal of science calls it luck. You know, if, if, if it were wind shear, like, oh, yeah, they only shot these missiles on days that were just horrible for shooting missiles. There was wind all over the place and everything like that, and that's why they didn't hit their targets. That is not fucking magic. I just realized that I'm y'all can't see this. Now you can. It didn't really matter. But... um I, I wonder how much of the of the video is done that way, though. <laughs> Just have to fix that in post. But, <coughs> the, uh, no, not too much whiskey. I just, I, uh, so what, uh, the same thing happened over here. Like, I hit po the sponsor thing, and then it went back to, I went back to the main cam instead of actually going back to the response video cam. So it's just a little fucked up. Y'all don't need to see any of this shit, though. <laughs> really. Um, but anyways, uh, so uh, uh, chalking up all these natural explanations to just God ha like enacting it when there's perfectly legitimate natural explanations is just ridiculous. Like, it's ridiculous to say that, uh, you know, this shit right here is um, God. Uh, it's natural shit. Even if it's natural shit that's unlikely to happen, it still can happen and does happen on a regular basis. So, you know, this, this guy's just ridiculous. You will not find another scientific study in the journal Nature which attributes the results to luck. But what are you going to say? God forbid it's a miracle? <laughs> God forbid. God forbid it's a miracle. I mean, not God forbid it's a miracle, but if you have natural explanations, then that's not God. Like, if you're going to attribute it to God, then you're obviously showing your bias here. You're showing that your narrative is, is that God does shit, and that natural shit is really angels that are having some kind of effect on reality. I mean, that it's just so fucking stupid. Like, to assert this and, and, and to portray yourself as some kind of, like, intellectual scientist and, and say, oh, this natural shit happened, but yeah, that's really God, I feel like is really undercutting your authority on this situation. If you have any kind of authority at all to speak on it. But anyways, that's it for his video. Uh, we're going to go back to the main screen here that we've been on for probably most of the night. I have no fucking clue. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it seems to have happened in this second part of the video, which I can fix in post. It seems like it's only been the last little bit here that I accidentally did it, like the last 10 minutes or so. So it's actually not all that bad. All right. So anyways, um, all in all, I was still not convinced by this, even uh, 10 years later, because uh, it's been nine years since he put this out. So that puts it back in like what, twenty uh twenty twelve. So, uh, back in twenty twelve, I reviewed this initially, and uh, I was not convinced then, and I'm still not convinced now, even with the added context of fucking angels that are apparently at work in our natural forces. Um, what? <laughs> angels! Woo woo! Oh, man, got to love them angels. Uh, oh, uh, I got to request a review for this, obviously, because I'm, I'm terrible, terrible on YouTube. Um, so we do have, I believe, a few comments to go over, which were actually really early tonight because I didn't have a lot of pretense leading up to the actual video. Uh, so we do have uh, a few comments to go over. Um, if you would like, you can join the Skeptic Mafia and you too can leave your comments as long as you join at the mafioso level. Uh, you could do that or you can uh, do a whole host of other things uh, to help us out here. Like you can uh, like and share, which I will 
put in the chat right now. Like and share this content. It really helps us get out to more and more people that uh, you want to bother with my content. Um, I know that there's a lot of people out there that can't stand me, but there's a small monicum of the population that can. So make sure you like and comment, and that'll get us out there to people. Share it with your friends that might like us or those that might hate us. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm talking like Gollum over here. Like, <laughs> they hate us. Baggins is. You like me? Well, that's what matters. Uh, also, don't forget that we have our heathen shirts. Um, if you want to get a shirt just like this, you want to be heathen, you want to let people know that you're a heathen, uh, do uh, definitely go and get that. Um, there's also the GE Clips channel that you can go and subscribe to as well if you like shorter form content, more specific content, content that's uh, specifically geared to one particular topic or one particular aspect of things. You can go there and you can get your daily uh, uh, dose of GE in a very specific kind of format. And then also, just to tug on myself a little bit more, there's GE Plays. Uh, you can go there and check us out. We play games on occasion. I'm working on some game content that I'm recording right now, uh, specifically Remnant 2. I don't know if you guys have played Remnant at all, but it's a pretty fun game. Uh, I like it a lot, even if I die a lot. But uh, go and check us out over there on Godless Engineer Plays. And um, I think that's all it for the shilling bit. Um, not convinced by this guy's uh, video. Still not. I wasn't convinced back, you know, 10 years ago. I'm not convinced now. And, um, yeah, I, I, I hope that you guys have a great night. We're going to be going into the Skeptic Mafia comments, and um, we're about to do that right now. But if you're heading out, I would love for you guys to leave a comment down below, smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens. But don't go because we got the Skeptic Mafia comments to go over, and I just I got to get over to the screen right now for that. Uh, let me get. I gotta scroll in a little bit. What? <laughs> you okay over there? Oh no! All right, here we go. First up is Command Cyborg, who says, "Hello, world. Oh no, boys and girls. This is gonna be dumb." Okay, no. That's not necessarily the beginning of the universe. It's just the first tensed moment of space time. There never was nothing. A true philosophical nothing is not incoherent as such, but impossible since there is something. Even those false vacuum states and fields and that sort of crap is something, you know. That's true. Very astute observation there, Command Cyborg. Oh, drat! There's another three to four minutes left of this stupid, uh, of this stupid to cover. Press play on tape. No, I would not say the black outside the diagram is nothing. It is, however, outside of our instantiation of space-time. These things are hard to put appropriate words on as they are, as of yet, outside the scope of possibility of investigation. That's a, a better way of explaining it than I did, because I was just like, we don't know what's out there. But uh, it's true, it's outside of our scope currently, uh, as far as our knowledge goes. Aha, there you go. The laws of nature is a nothing. <laughs> the laws of nature are very far from the biblical definition of God. They aren't sentient nor personal. Okay, there's that part in John where he tries to smuggle Jesus into Genesis. He's a very naughty boy. That so-called John type. Uh, all the be uh, Y'all better stay away from him. He makes the presubs all annoying to be around and such. By the way, you're a Jewish person. What are you doing getting definitions of God out of the New Testament? I thought you would, uh, you lot would be, you lot be seeing that piece of writing quite heretical. Anyways, as always, consider the whale peen. I hear from a bad authority, Hovind, but, um, or not Hovind, sorry, that's Ham, Ken Ham. <laughs> that it's 15 foot long, but it was Hoven that said that bullshit. Smash all the buttons, ring a ding dong, insert a free shilling here. So if you want to join the Skeptic Mafia, uh, please do. We got a lot of great shit going on. Next week we have a Bible podcast that's going to be coming out, and we're going to try to record a Mafioso uh, podcast uh, to go along with the daily Bible podcast that's coming out. And I know it's definitely coming out because I already have it uploaded. Just waiting for it to go out. 
uh, been trying to get back into the swing of things, and there was a little bit of problem with it uh, for this past week, but we are going to be getting more shit out, okay? Um, but, yeah, you can do that. Uh, if you join the Skeptic Mafia uh, the Skeptic Mafia at the sh- uh, shill level, you'll be able to use all the emojis, and everything after the shill level, you get access to the emojis too. So those are good things. That's all, folks. Thank you, and good night. World transmission terminated. Uh, I did want to go back to one thing here. Um, yeah, he is a Jewish guy. He, he is a Jew. Um, but when he references the biblical God, I imagine him referencing the Jewish Bible and not the, uh, you know, Bible that's the New Testament and the Old Testament. Uh, I mean, I was confused by that at first, too. Like, I, I totally rejected this idea that the uh, Jewish people called their particular holy text the Jewish Bible is, you know, Torah or the Pentateuch or whatever, but there is a such thing called the Jewish Bible. So he can be Jewish and call his holy text, the Bible. That, that is one possible thing. I don't know the dude. I don't know if he's one of these messianic Jews that uses like the Holy Bible or the new Testament or anything like that. Um, so, I mean, I guess I honestly don't even know if that's what a messianic Jew would use, but I can imagine some kind of flavor of religious that would not necessarily be Christian, but use the Holy Bible as far as Abrahamic faiths go. Drew's Book Review says, oh, I can't wait to discover God in five minutes because that's what it takes to answer one of the most complicated questions in the universe, right? Yep. Polly Pocket says, damn it, I don't believe in God. Did I mess up? Join the Mafio, says people. It's good times. Thank you so much there, Polly Pockets. Appreciate you there. Uh, Jonathan Nickel says, whilst watching this video, I also spent uh, a little time researching Gerald Schroeder, as I'm sure any good skeptic would. Whilst he holds genuine credentials in the science of physics, he is an Orthodox Jew who tries to reconcile science with a biblical six-day creation, and his ideas are not exactly supported by the scientific community, I would therefore not be surprised to see a degree of confirmation bias. Exactly. I totally agree. So he's not uh, one of the Messianic Jews. He's an Orthodox Jew. But saying the biblical God, I could still imagine him just referencing the Old Testament. Despite what he says, the WMAP image does not show beginning to the universe, only a moment of initial expansion, the Big Bang. Uh, This is only the beginning of the inflation of the universe, not the origin of everything. Everything that exists now existed as energy at that moment, and we cannot go back before that point to investigate further. Uh, Yeah, anything that talks about anything prior to the inflation of the universe is just speculation. We can't know what actually happened. Now, that doesn't prevent science from speculating about what happened because we do have hypotheses about, you know, what happened prior to the universe, but they remain scientific hypotheses. Like they're not proven in any kind of way. They're not scientific theories or anything like that. They are just hypotheses. Like these are just guesses as to what happened. And we just have to figure out ways in order to either disprove them or confirm them. Um, and it, you know, I don't know if any of those things will ever be done. But that's where we're sitting right now is we have hypotheses about how what the state of the universe pr- prior to, to ours, but that doesn't mean that we know anything about it. <clears throat> the Big Bang was that start of an expansion event, not the beginning of everything. The Big Bang was the origin of our local presentation of our universe, not the cosmos. All that exists now existed as energy at that moment, and we cannot investigate beyond that point. What may have preceded the Big Bang, if that is even a concept, is a matter of pure speculation. Schroeder wants to insert his God at that point, but that is no more speculation than any other claim. Just look at him at the end, talking about how his supposed God predates time, is outside of of time, and uh, creates the universe. Any form of creation would be a temporal event, as in as is the case in any kind of change. I don't see how it is possible to have any form of creation outside of our predate or predating time. Since existence is also clearly temporal, anyone who asserts that their God can exist outside of time is talking about God, a God that cannot exist. 
The only God that has been demonstrated is the God of the gaps. I would agree. Totally. Mr. Hanacek just has a whole bunch of fail whales and then a KC what the fuck emoji. She loves using that what the fuck face, by the way. She uses it on me like all the time. Yeah, literally. <laughs> uh, all, all I have for you is this ASCII for sacrifice. I love a good sacrifice, by the way. And that's all I got. Do that. Uh, do with that what you will. Oh, and while you're doing stuff, go ahead and give that like button a big lick as well as the subscribe button. Ooh, ooh, maybe while you're down there, maybe you can join the Skeptic Mafia. We have perks. List of perks here. Emojis are a perk. Uh, are a perk. Uh, hangouts, uh, usually monthly hangouts are a perk. Um And then there's a Skeptic Mafia podcast that's also a perk if you want to hear KC talk about current events. She loves going on about current events. Yeah, I do. Um, uh, KC was saying that if I'm going to do a monthly hangout, I need to do it this weekend. So uh, I'll put a poll up right after this stream for the Skeptic Mafia to pick either Saturday or Sunday to do it. Uh, it'll be in the afternoon, probably around 3 p.m. Central Time. I think that that's um, probably a good time to pick for both days. So uh, that way I don't fuck it up again. But uh, in any case, <clears throat> uh, and with that being said, insert a generic shilling and remember the mantra, Casey is always right. I will listen to Casey's recommendations. Casey is God. I don't know about that last bit. You are awesome. Uh huh. I wouldn't denigrate you enough to to call you God though. <laughs> uh, eat your goddamn fruits and veggies and drink some fucking water, you filthy heathens. Tomato out. And then we got Trickster who says, "What the hell is Taurus science? It's called bullshit, there, Trickster. It's bullshit. Science has not discovered God." As far as I'm aware, has this discovery gone through peer review? Is there a paper I can look at as he gave absolutely no citation for the statement? Uh, Obviously not. I mean, they're not going to point out any kind of peer reviewed article because the peer reviewed article would have to come from like a religious paper mill. And that's not going to convince anybody. That's just going to show their bias. Uh, at least he's not a young earth creationist creation. I do not think he knows what this word means. Even if he can prove that the universe was created, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hundred percent mean there was a creator. I don't think what he is saying about nothing is correct. As far as I know, science, absolutely nothing. Science says absolutely nothing about God. And then math says, ah, this classic, he thinks God is just the forces of nature. How is that different from pantheism? You know, that's a pretty good observation there. How is it different from pantheism? I don't think that it is. But, you know, he says it is. So to him, it must be. But anyways, that's going to be it for the mafiosos tonight. Uh, and that's it for the stream. I hope that you guys enjoyed it, and I know I did. Got it back. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, I will be putting up a Sunday or Saturday uh, post for the Mafiosos to pick which day we should hang out on. Um, And uh, I guess I will be seeing you heathens later. Uh, Thank you so much for everybody that commented, everybody that joined in. Uh, I don't see any uh, uh, super chats that I missed. I believe, yeah, I believe I covered everybody. Uh, and so I guess I will see you heathens later. Don't forget to stand up, use your voice and all that kind of good shit. And we will be seeing you heathens next week. Maybe. Yes. Next week. Cause it's not Christmas yet. Next week is the 22nd moving on into the Christmas time. So, uh, next week will be our last show for the month. So hope you guys can make it and I will see you heathens later. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.